All right, this is a sped up overview of the tire patch process that I went over in class today. It was about a half hour demo, but when I went to edit, I found the audio from my lecture somehow got corrupted. So I just mounted a clip. Uh, so I just muted the clip and I'm going to voice over to fill in the content. Hopefully the good news here will be because I can speed up the show and maybe save some time. So here we go. First I need to identify where exactly the hole is in the tire. In this case there is no hole, uh, but for the good of the crew we'll pretend it's right about here. Using some tire chalk I like to make a big circle around the hole and mark the four quarters so that later after I scrape away at the material I can use the reference lines to identify where the puncture was located. Next I need to prep the area by squirting a little liquid buffer over the area that I'll be cleaning. The cleaning process is important because there's a thin layer of gel coating that covers the inside of the tire and the gel needs to be removed so that the patch can stick to the raw rubber. Now I'm going to prep the surface using a liquid buffer and a rigid piece of plastic. Uh, it's the method that I learned back in high school when I had my first shop job at Jerry Sitko as the, as the tire guy. It's also the method that's worked for me for going on 25 years now, and it's never failed. Uh, but I will acknowledge that I'm aware that there's an alternative method to prepping the surface area that involves an air-powered brass buffing wheel, but that's a tool that I wouldn't recommend. I'm not going to tell you not to use it, and I'm not going to say that that method is wrong or anything like that, but I will say that it's way too easy to overdo it and end up gouging big chunks of structural integrity out of the tire, uh, which is obviously not a best practice. So I'd recommend just use the buffer and a scraper. Remember, your objective is simply to remove the gel coating on the inside of the tire, so plastic scraper is going to work just fine. You'll be able to tell when the area is clear, clear to that gel coating because it'll appear dull and a bit darker when compared to other parts of the tire that are shiny and still have the gel coating. So next I'm going to apply a thin layer of vulcanizing rubber, also known as the same old rubber cement that you used when you were in elementary school. Make sure you have enough applied so that the patch will be 100% in contact when we put it on. Uh, the Thin layer is best. The key with this step is to allow the material to dry, which makes it tacky. The tacky aspect is what grabs the patch and adheres it to the inside of the tire. So if you don't let it dry up, it might, it might run into some problems getting the patch to stick. Or, or rather, when you apply the patch, it'll be easier for the edges of the patch to come loose. Here's another spot where I should pause to draw attention to an alternative method of drying the rubber cement the set it on fire method. I see it a lot and in theory it works. The idea is to simply put a Bic lighter up to the rubber cement and light it. It's flammable, it burns, it smells bad, it looks cool, and it does work to dry out the cement. But as Jeff pointed out in class today, it also leaves a layer of soot on the area which is not an adhesive and actually ends up working against you when you try to make the patch stick. So just take a few minutes and let it air dry have a coke or something. Once the rubber cement is dry, as told by the lack of sheen on the material, you can apply the patch. Be careful when you apply the patch that your greasy fingers don't touch the sticky side. This might take a little practice and at least one long fingernail, but you'll get it. After you've applied the patch, uh, we want to use the roller and roll out the air pockets and press contact over as much the patch as possible. Every part of the patch. The, the moment of truth is when you use this little screwdriver or a pick or a knife or something and you peel the backing off of the patch. Uh, I call it the moment of truth because if you didn't get the rubber cement step down perfect then the patch is going to peel up in the in the edges and you'll have to start all over. Um, one last step is the bead sealer. Bead sealer is typically associated with the beads of the tire, but it applies here too. The sealer, when it dries, becomes a malleable form of rubber that does two things for our patch. One, it adds an extra layer of sealing around the patch. And two, it seals up all of the areas that we first scraped off on that gel coating back in step one. And there you have it. Uh, it's the perfect patch. Like I said earlier, it's not the only way to do it but it is the way that makes it nearly impossible to damage the tire 
And if you use this method, OSHA won't be able to find you for lighting flammables on fire in the shop. Happy patching.